All right, now Queensland State MP Jason Costigan is a polarising figure. He's never been afraid to call a spade a shovel. Twelve months ago, almost to the day, Costigan was expelled by the LNP after two sexual harassment claims were made against him, one involving an 18-year-old woman. The LNP said it had high moral standards and the decision was about protecting young women and victims against predators. Costigan, the MP for Whit Sundays, refused to resign from Parliament, instead vowing to fight the allegations. He then set up his own party, North Queensland First, which he says will contest targeted seats at the next poll on October 31. Mr Costigan joins me now live in our Brisbane studio for his first TV interview since the scandal broke. Welcome, Jason Costigan. Now, the obvious question uh, for you tonight is, are you a sexual predator? Not at all, Gleeso. Look you in the eye uh, and, and say it straight. Absolutely not. And I resent that. I know you've got to ask the tough questions. I used to do a similar job to you, as you know. Mm. And that's BS. Mm. And I maintain what I've said in the Parliament in the last 12 months and stand by that. They're serious allegations. And, of course, we know that Deb Frecklington was, was very hard-nosed about it. And she actually used the term predator. And, and referred the matter to the police. Have you heard anything back from the, from the police? Well, again, a fair question, Gleeso, and I can tell your viewers right across Australia tonight, I've never had a phone call from the police anywhere. And so nothing's changed to what I said in the Parliament, mm. uh, going back, as you say, as you were alluding to, nearly 12 months ago. And so, uh, I'll, needless to say, the matter is still in the hands of my legal team. And uh, that's where it's at. You talked about defamation at the yep. time. Is that still an option? Well, as I said, the matter is with my legal team right now, and that's where it's at, and um, more will be revealed in due course. Any regrets over the way it's been handled? Well, I was such Certainly a, from the LNP's well, perspective. Well, I was such a committed person to the LNP, as you know, uh, and the people watching this program. I was a true Conservative. I'd worked and had the privilege of working for three Liberals in the Federal Parliament, the late LB Schultz, former meat worker, in the Federation seat of Hume, then Ian MacDonald, uh, Senator MacDonald out of North Queensland, and then George Brandis when he was a young minister in the, in the Howard government. So uh, an MP, a senator and a minister. So my colours were pretty much obvious to all and sundry. I was loyal to the cause. I broke a 26-year drought in Sunday. They couldn't beat an egg, Gleeson, until I came along. And how many MPs won when Newman came in? Mm. Every Tom, Dick and Harry seemed to win. Mm. Well, with that big noting, the record shows we won every booth. I was the only one north of Bundaberg to do that, and then we've defied the critics not once, but twice, and continue to fight the good fight, and then got ratted on by the LNP. And, you know, it is a sore point. It's a real sore point. And February 1 last year, when I got booted out, on the back of a complaint from a woman I've never met, right? On the back of a complaint from someone I've never met, that anniversary is coming up, and it is a sore point. And that was the day that the LNP, or the, uh, the South East Liberals, as I call mm. them, that was the day that they declared war on North Queensland. Because not only have they picked a fight with me, mm. they've picked a fight with people north of the Tropic of Capricorn. Just on that, you've set up your own party, North Queensland First, mm -hmm. and you actually said to me the other day that you intend to hold the balance of power. Are you confident you'll win with Sundays? Well, I am quietly confident, but I'm the underdog. All the pressure's on the LNP candidate because... Uh, uh, again, people are writing me off. I, I know that. Uh, and having said that, I'm doing the grassroots work in my own electorate. I was uh, in Mackay in the Whit Sundays in the last 24 hours attending the Australia Day activities in Mackay and in Proserpine, doing that bread and butter stuff, writing letters to the Minister for Transport and Main Roads, um, helping the sick lady up the road, uh, making sure she's getting through to the hospital and getting treatment, not falling through the cracks. Mm. All that little stuff that doesn't make the front page of the Courier Mail. Mm. Uh, and I don't want to meddle for that. That just That's part of the service. Part but, of the job. Yeah, it is part of the job. But I'm quietly confident of defying the critics again. And not only that, uh, and we have had people coming forward wanting to be a candidate for NQ first mm. at the next election. And yes, for sure, we want to hold the balance of power and, and, and understand the responsibilities that go with that and make a, bet, make a better life for people in central north and far north Queensland. Did Bob Catter or Paul Enhanced approach you? Well, I had a message I can confide in you tonight, and I've not spoken about this publicly, but um, the day I spoke in the Parliament after being expelled by the LNP, uh, I spoke to Mr Catter, the Federal Member for Kennedy, 
that morning on the back of a message saying he wants to speak to you. And I spoke to Mr Catter, and I have enormous respect for Mr Catter, um, but on the back of that, no meeting took place. Uh, we were supposed to meet not once but twice, and it didn't happen. Um, and and that, that's disappointing because I was hoping to meet with him uh, with an open mind. It didn't happen. And life goes on. We've set up our own party. It's been registered with the authorities. We have 60 paid-up members, I think, Gleeso at last report, from Cairns, Ingham, Townsville, Mackay, the Whitsundays. So in the northern part of the state of Queensland, we've got people coming to our party and we're three seconds old. OK, what are your policy... Um, give us your yeah. policy on sharks, because that's a big issue in your electorate. It is electric. a massive issue, massive issue. And what people in central and north and far north Queensland are jack of, and you can go to the pubs, you can take your show on the road, and even people who don't vote for me, Gleeso, they'll say, look, I'm, I mightn't um, vote for Costigan, but I agree with him that we need to have the drum lines and the shark nets back in our waters. They've got them on the Gold Coast, as you know, as you of all people know, yep. Sunshine Coast. But in, they should have them up there. It's ridiculous. It's, ridiculous. It, it's jeopardising public safety. Not only, local, Tourism. not only locals, but you're right, about tourists. And one of the News Corp papers broke the story recently about such a, a whack to the tourism industry, and it was quantified on how much of a hit it's been on the tourism industry in the wet Sundays of all places. Well, Blind Freddy could have told you it was going to be bad, bad news. It was last year it was revealed that the backpacker market in Germany has collapsed in the Whitsundays. And, of course, the shark drama, it's still lingering out there and it's still a very delicate position. And I worry about when we're going to have, not if, but another shark attack. And, of course, we then we go to crocodiles. It's, look, Frecklington can say whatever she wants, Gleeso. Uh, she used, they used to say to me, don't mention the C word, as in cull. Well, there's so many people that... Um, now are of the view that we've got to do something about it because people are going to be eaten and, of course, it's going to have a knock-on effect to our tourism industry. The world's going to be talking about us and not in a very good way. OK. Who wins on, uh, on, May, on October 31, Palaszczuk or Frecklington? Well, if I was... Uh, a betting man, you are. Well, I'll say neither. neither. I'll say neither. One of them I don't believe will get to the starters, face the starters gun. I'll say it now on your program tonight, I don't expect the Leader of the Opposition. I've called her a seat warmer before, and uh, she's called me all sorts of names. All's fair in love and war. I don't think she'll get to the election. I believe that the member for Nanango will get rolled. Uh, look, they should be bashing up the Palaszczuk Labor government. And I'll tell you, I make a point on your show here, Gleeso, tonight, and it's been said on your program, I'm sure, before. They talk about the Queensland government being the most left-leaning government in Queensland's history. I'll tell you what. The opposition, the LNP, that failed merger, it's the most left-leaning conservative force as an opposition we've seen in Queensland history too. They've shifted to the left. That's why people like me and there's members of the LNP caucus, they're like dinosaurs. You know, Vaughan Johnson was recognised, and rightly so, in the last 24 hours with an OAM. Mm. He got squeezed out of the LNP, mm. seemed to be a dinosaur. You know, if we had more people like Vaughan Johnson in the Queensland Parliament, this state would be better off.